Welcome back to USS Cod Submarine Memorial. Hello, I'm Director Paul Ferrace, and uh, we've been talking lately about uh, some interesting things, aspects inside the sub. Uh, we've talked about bakers on subs. We've talked about eating during depth charges attacks, and, and it's been very popular. And uh, we've also been asked by some viewers to talk about more of the war fighting aspects. And I gotta tell you, Cod is a lean, mean fighting machine. Um, she sank 36,000 tons or more of enemy shipping. Uh, but today she's kind of a toothless lion. And I say that because in the historical collection, uh, there aren't too many torpedoes with warheads. We're talking about the fact that most of the uh, historic submarines on display uh, their torpedo inventory primarily consists of exercise head fish, and that's understandable, given the fact that all of the war shots, uh, particularly Mark 14s, were war shotted and blew up. But the exercise torpedoes, now these are torpedoes that have, in place of the explosives in the noses, basically water ballast, that uh, they were fired before a war patrol at a friendly ship set intentionally to run safely beneath the keel. Uh, being Mark 14s, of course, they left a uh, bubble trail behind them. So you would definitely know the, uh, uh, the path of the fish and you could uh, get a report card on your, uh, on your uh, shooting ability. At the end of the run, um, the uh, air in the massive air flask that comprises most of the length of a Mark 14 would blow the water ballast out of the nose and uh, uh, the whole torpedo would pop to the surface for reuse. Now, come in here. Um, in World War II and, and, and for about a decade thereafter, yellow was the uh, uh, high visibility recovery color. Uh, later it became orange. But, uh, so this is a Mark 14 Mod 5, which as I said, a toothless lion, we can't fire this. Uh, and I'll explain in a minute why we can't. Uh, but uh, um, we certainly could blow it out of the tube. Um, but uh, uh, this is an exercise head. It has the same shape, dimensions, weight, and everything as a warhead, uh, except that in place of uh, uh, the explosives, there's water ballast, uh, which uh, has roughly the same weight as uh, uh, the explosives would be. Uh, under here, there isn't the exploder tray. But there are these recovery aids. I'll come in and close on these. By the way, you're gonna notice dents. That's not from our poor handling. Uh, that is um, a result of uh, the Navy's mishandling. So these recovery aids help you locate the torpedo thousands of yards downrange after it's passed underneath your ship. Uh, one of them is a, a smoke float. One of them is a flashlight. Uh, it might have been this. Uh, and the other one I was told they even went as far as to have whistles so at night it would make a, a low uh, pitch whistling noise as the air uh, escaped so that you could uh, locate it. Uh, again, that's told to me by old submarine uh, torpedo men. Um, I don't have any uh, definite uh, validation on that. But also on the bottom down here there is a poppet valve and I've got my fingers in it right now and I'm doing this in January. I wouldn't want to do this in July or August because hornets and wasps love to build nests in these crevices. But um, we have a cutaway. We're going to go aboard uh, in a minute and we'll show you that. But uh, before we do go below, I do want to point out why we can't fire this. Come on over here. Mark 14s weigh about uh, 3,000 pounds. They're 20 feet 6 inches long and of course we all know 21 inches in diameter. This after body. Uh, is uh, was manufactured in 1944 um, and it's uh, uh, it's the mod 5 now what is difference with the mod 5 well back under here uh, where my fingers are there's a, a cavity and there's a multi pin socket um, that would be where you would plug in uh, a data cable and it would uh, travel through this little holder ring right here to a door interface uh, so that you could electronically program the gyro uh, compass which is located in here 
uh, right up to the moment of firing. The earlier wartime Mark 14s had a, uh, a little spindle cavity right here where a spindle would uh, come in from uh, the uh, torpedo tube, uh, mate with that spindle receptacle, and you would mechanically set the gyro angle, as well as the depth and speed, high or low, um, uh, mechanically. But that had to be withdrawn a moment before firing. And sometimes maneuvering and such, uh, you might not fire that torpedo for a critical few moments and that might be a critical miss. Uh, so having electronic uh, uh, capability that would program it right up to the moment of firing was, was deemed much better. So if you loaded this aboard COD, and if all of our systems were working, which let's be frank, nobody's submarine is capable of, of, of firing uh, and, and programming a fish, uh, we could load it into the tube, we could blow it out, but she ain't going anywhere. Even if, it was a fer if, if it was a perfectly uh, usable weapon, uh, because we can't program the gyro angle. Uh, we don't have the capability. We never got the modification. If COD had stayed in the war, I mean, excuse me, it had stayed in, in, in service uh, a few more years and had been modern modernized with the Guppy program, they would have taken off the, uh, the um, uh, breech doors and replaced them with doors that had a, uh, 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 the interface for the electronic uh, cable system. But anyway, let's uh, get out of this mist and, and fog and chill into the boat and we'll talk about uh, uh, exercise fish in the forward room. Oh, Dave. Up ladder. Well, we're back in the boat now um, and we're looking at another Mark 14 Mod 5. This one uh, came aboard in 1998 um, on loan from our friends at the Naval Heritage and History Command uh, Curator Branch. Um, and their inventory pretty much uh, was, was, was exclusively exercise heads, as again, as I mentioned earlier, because warheads had been blown up uh, and uh, the inventory of torpedoes after the war, when these things were no longer needed, was pretty much the, uh, the exercise fish. Although I will note that, uh, oh, years ago, um, a unknown supply of Mark 14s with warheads was found in Nevada and, uh, the, uh, at an Army depot. And the Army was going to blow them up, but when the Navy found out, they said, whoa, 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 wait a minute, these are artifacts. Uh, so COD was uh, happy to help um, basically uh, retrieve these and uh, demill them. Now, it was a standard uh, Mark 14, and I got to believe it was a Mod 5, but they had the, uh, the warheads. And um, the, Navy, uh, the Navy said, we're going to uh, find somebody who's still qualified in, in Mark 14s. And although they didn't know who that was, we knew who it was. It was our uh, crewman, Bob Pallet who uh, was the last uh, uh, guy to go through the Mark 14 school, and he's still up and at him and, and a sharp guy. So he had uh, his uh, documentation and tooling, and he uh, went out and uh, was able to remove the, the warheads and show them how to get at the cavities and various things as they were steam demilled, uh, get rid of the explosives, and became available. Sadly, we uh, couldn't get any of those. And that's subject for another uh, uh, um, time, uh, maybe after a quart of Jack Daniels. Uh, we didn't get any of those warheads, uh, but some of the museum subs did, and we're happy for them. Uh, but uh, so we did get the uh, uh, the exercise heads. Now, uh, this again, as I said, is one of those uh, um, uh, later exercise uh, versions. Um, this is. The whistle I was talking to you about, I've never heard this thing, but this center one, you can see it takes uh, a bleed air off of this main uh, air flask. We'll show you that in detail in a minute, big void. But that's a whistle. Um, this one, one of these, and again, I haven't taken these apart. I believe this is the, uh, the light, so this is going to be a big flashlight. This might be the smoke flare. Uh, again, uh, gushing smoke when it pops to the surface. Now, when it pops to the surface, um, it's going to pop to the surface because there is a, 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 a massive amount of air that's now depleted, 
And uh, when that air pressure is bled into the, uh, the water-filled cavity here, uh, it for opens this poppet valve on the bottom. And get in here and show that poppet valve on the floor down there. That will blow the water out because the high-pressure air is forcing it out. And uh, the cavity is now pretty much filled with air. And like the cod itself, it's a submarine, it pops to the surface and the yellow uh, uh, coloration of the head helps you spot it. Uh, now here in the floor is a uh, block of lead that was cast in. Um, again, and I, that's, uh, I believe, might be part of a, a warhead. Uh, if you are a torpedo man and you have experience with the old 14s, please chime in, let us know if the warheads have this uh, block of uh, lead. But it might be for ballast and to compensate uh, for the, uh, the weight difference between the actual warhead and, uh, and the water-filled exercise head. And being on the bottom, it'll keep the torpedo upright. Uh, but this is the volume of bang that would uh, be brought against an enemy ship, although it would be filled with uh, torpex and certainly not water. And I'm beginning to really uh, wonder if I should have said cod is a toothless lion, uh, given the fact that we were so savagely depth charged uh, last week by the uh, Canadian icebreaker uh, um, Henry Alexander. It's, oh, we, I don't want to ever ex experience that again. But you know what? Uh, we might get one of these working so we can defend ourselves next time they come a-calling. But anyway, so here's the, uh, the later model uh, exercise head. But uh, come around here, and uh, we have some uh, earlier Mark 14s. Now, this is another Mark 14 Mod 5. It's completely intact. This one, and there's my hand, this one, uh, we'll just say, is original to COD. Um, when COD was transferred to our organization in 1976, this uh, was our one Mark 14. Now, interestingly enough, if you look at the, the, the bull noses uh, where you would uh, put your uh, uh, rope and your, uh, uh, your loading nose piece, you see how it's different than the later ones. So this is definitely a World War II uh, exercise head. And it only has the two uh, recovery aids at the top. Uh, boy, someday it would be nice to open that up and see how it differs from, from these. Um, we had Ben, uh, one of our curators, climb in there uh, because he's skinny and uh, pretty uh, flexible. And we were able to confirm that this is a Mark 14 Mod 3. So we could fire that one. Uh, keep that in mind, Connor Kilgore. Uh, we, if we get that into a tube, we could punch a hole in you. Um, anyway, so come on over here. I want to point out, this is our Mark 18 electric. And again, this is original to COD at the uh, transfer. This is not painted yellow. This is an actual warhead. So uh, that's uh, a big bunch of boom in there. Um, being a, an electric fish, uh, it has uh, the, uh, there's a little cavity under here. We're going to talk about that at a later time. We're going to keep this exclusive to exercise fish. Suffice to say, that's a warhead, and uh, that, that gives us uh, a, a little bit of uh, lethality if it was filled with torpex. But come on back here. Um, you can see that most of the length of this is a massive 3,000 PSI air bottle. And that air provides at least the oxygen content uh, to the uh, combustion chamber uh, to create steam. There's a water tank, there's an alcohol tank, and the uh, alcohol is atomized, it's sprayed into a combustion chamber with um, the water and alcohol and the air mixture, and that's burned. Uh, there's an igniter, and that creates steam that drives the turbines. Um, but uh, uh, that's a whole big wasted bunch of space for basically the 18, 19% of the volume here. That's the oxygen. That's what we need. That's why the Japanese oxygen torpedoes were uh, uh, superior weapons, because uh, in the same size, you could devote much more for warheads and fuel, much greater range. Of course, oxygen had its uh, uh, issues with uh, volatility, 
Um, you can see there's the fuel flask painted green. And if you've watched earlier, we talked about uh, how to start a torpedo. Here's the starting switch. And uh, things here are pretty much uh, labeled thanks to Al Winkler. Uh, here's the turbine. Uh, here's the lube oil tank. And if I can move my head, this is the inside of that uh, uh, Mod 5 electronic pin assembly right here. This, this black cylinder with the uh, wiring cable harness coming out of it. So this is what supplants um, the, uh, the actual uh, mechanical spindles used in World War II torpedoes. And of course, it also has a two-pin cable guide. So apparently, this has a modification here. Uh, we are outboard uh, torpedo on Big Henry. Uh, it only has this cable guide. This one has one up here as well. So um, COD's inventory of torpedoes consists of um, the three Mark 14s all exercise here in the forward room. Um, we have a Mark 14 Mod 5 exercise head uh, mounted outside on Big Henry. Uh, we have one Mark 18 electric fish with a warhead, thank God. Um, and back aft we have a, a Mark 27 Mod 4 um, homing torpedo. Uh, it's not the cutie of World War II. Again, that's a subject for an upcoming uh, uh, program. Uh, how most of our sisters are missing the mark uh, on uh, describing their Mark 27 Mod 4s as the World War II cutie uh, that uh, was used to save subs uh, late in the war and in fact sank the last ship, uh, a, a cutie, a Mark 27 Mod 0, uh, which was half the length, fired by Torsk. Of course, props to Torsk for that. Uh, but anyway, so that's our inventory. Now, the Mark 27 Mod 4 that we have back aft, twice the length of the World War II version, um, it has a warhead uh, nose. Um, there was a, a specific exercise head, but uh, they were kind of expensive, and the Navy found out, hey, let's just take the bang out, fill the cavity with plaster of Paris, and use old warheads or you know demilled warheads as exercise heads. So that's what we have back aft. So darn it, you know we don't have any except for our Mark 18. We just have all exercise heads. So uh, we can't go out and sink anybody um, except maybe the Alexander Henry. Those guys uh, we we owe them one. Um, so we are sort of the toothless tiger uh, currently. Uh, but uh, if anybody wants to uh, trade or anybody has uh, a link to an eBay site that might be selling some uh, Mark 14s or Mark 23s with warheads, talk to me. Again, like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and we'll come back with more content. Thank you.